you said you thought it was the accumulation of the week and the uh, the Supreme Court decision. Uh, Lou was talking about Father's Day. Do you think that may have played a role too? Um, I think that the governor always had his family on his on his mind. I think that you, you at least in this business, you don't make a decision, you don't think about your political choices uh, outside of their impact on your family. And so I'm not certain that it was uh, anything special about Father's Day. It clearly underscored uh, probably the, uh, the the choice he had to make and the decision that he had to make. And 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 uh, but I I think he's probably been thinking about his family throughout this. Do you, um, are, were you invited, are you invited over to the mansion? Yeah. Some Democrats when are you go, When are you going? Uh, between 4.30 and 5, I'm going to go. Some Democrats have suggested that the lieutenant governor should just clean house with uh, a majority of the governor's commissioners. Do, do you agree with that? Uh, I think it would be appropriate for the lieutenant governor to ask for the resignation of all uh, all of the current commissioners. I think she should, re including my wife, <laughs> she should uh, reconstitute her cabinet uh, to her liking, uh, making decisions on a case-by-case -case basis of, uh, of uh, you know, who she wants in her, in her cabinet. I think it's important for her to reconstitute this administration as a real administration. Keating, now you're going to get some hard questions. Uh oh, it's late. Keating, late. Sorry. Tell me, uh, tell me about Rel. I'm interested in Rel going forward. Um, and 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 well, you can start. But before I forget to ask the question, any change in policy? It's the first thing I wanted to ask you. Any potential change in policy yeah. or not? I I think that that's for Jody to articulate over the coming months, and especially at the beginning of the biennium. Uh, I would be surprised to see a radical departure from the program pursued by the governor. I think that the lieutenant governor on policy matters has been in sync with the governor. But again, that's really for, for, for Jody to decide and to articulate uh, what her message is going to be um, uh, going forward. And I think we'll see more of that in the January you know, message before the legislature. Okay, and Kevin Sullivan as uh, lieutenant governor? You've had some tussles with him, to say the least. Uh, do you expect a smooth transition? There's been some, some harsh words, frankly, at times. Well, it appears that Kevin has gotten what he has always wanted. And so I wish him well. Which is what? The lieutenant governorship. The, tell me about the, the $120,000 in, in transition funds. Uh, is that still an issue? That is, that is currently in the lieutenant governor's uh, budget. You know, this is not, I don't, I'm not certain that this is a day for us to, to, to uh, engage in that kind of political back and forth. I think that uh, the reality is Kevin is about to become governor, lieutenant governor on July 1st, and uh, his responsibilities as lieutenant governor will be his responsibilities, and uh, the budget will ultimately be the decision of the legislature uh, over the next couple of years. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't really think it's good to be going down that road right do you, now. Do you, think, right. do you expect a, a sort of a political honeymoon period here? Do you think there's going to be bipartisan support for REL under these circumstances? Jody is, is respected and admired on both sides of the aisle. She is someone who can work with legislators, having been a legislator before. Uh, Republican leaders uh, uh, stand in unison behind her and will help uh, promote her efforts and make sure that this transmission is smooth and that we continue to succeed on policy matters. Uh, back to the governor then. Um, at any point, including over this weekend, did you advise him to resign? I know you did not. You didn't call for him to resign uh, previously. The decision, the decision about whether the governor should resign, has always been the governor's to make. Today, the governor has made his decision, and uh, and we move on. Why today? It's a good question. Uh, I haven't spoke to him yet today. I know he's having a he's having a, a rough day. And I'm going to see him this afternoon, so I. What would you guess? I'll today? wait. To see. What would I guess today about why today? Why today? Uh, you know, look, I think that the uh, the events of last week did not did not bode well. Uh, both the Supreme Court decision and the and the continuing revelation of the details of the Matthews deal, the condominium deal, did not look promising for the governor in terms of the impeachment committee's decision with respect to an article of impeachment and so he may have very well decided that the handwriting was on the wall and wanted to uh, to avoid any 
any more uh, discomfort for his family and for the legislature. In light of that, do you think he made the right decision? I believe he made the right decision. Uh, I think that the level of gift giving that was becoming uh, clear uh, and the circumstances around those gifts was just untenable. Uh, I just don't see how we could, as a state, uh, tolerate uh, that kind of behavior. Do you think he would have, granted it's a hypothetical, but he would have survived a vote in the Senate? I, ha I have no idea, but I think it was increasingly unlikely that he would have survived a vote in the Senate. We're hearing a lot of Republicans today say this is an appropriate move on the governor's part. Uh, was this, would this have been an appropriate move to make quite some time ago, not today? Uh, again, as, as I have said, it would have been appropriate for him to make it whenever he decided it was the right decision for him. Uh, and so the fact that he chose to wait uh, is, is, a, is a decision and an issue that only he can, uh, he, he can, he can talk about. I, I will tell you that had I known what he obviously knew about what he did, I would have resigned a long time ago and not put my family through this. Do you have any sense of who might take Sullivan's position as a pro tem? No sense at all. I know there's a lot of ambition over there in that caucus, but uh, that's going to have to sort itself out. And is, is, is this, how much has this divided the Republican Party, if at all? Well, I think it's important to remember that, that, that the, it's, it, you shouldn't jump too quickly to conclusions about its impact on the Republican Party. You know, I don't presume that the, the Democrat Party in Connecticut is corrupt because Joe Ganim is sitting in prison. Um, the misconduct of John Rowland uh, reflects poorly on John Rowland. Uh, the message, the principles, the ideas of the Republican Party, and the messengers who stand ready to continue to bring that message to the people of Connecticut are untarnished by this. I mean, we're ready to continue to push for the things we believe in. Uh, and, uh, you know, as I say, th these are actions and, and conduct that are personal in nature. Do you have any kind of historical perspective you can put this day in as far as Connecticut history? Any, anything well, along those lines? I think this is an unprecedented day in, in Connecticut history. I don't think there's any any box you can put this day in, and I think that uh, our hope is that we move through it as smoothly um, and as quietly as possible and that we get on to doing the business of the state. Thank you.